welcome to the Unit 10 review. Congratulations for getting this far. All right, <clears throat> a couple of things I know I remember from last year about this test. Um, you want to make sure you remember how to do the adding and subtracting. Those are the first two slides, all right? A lot of you are going to factor and do it well. You just need to remember that when you factor, you take a GCF out first, and you can't have any negatives first, all right? So you're going to have to factor out a negative or factor out a GCF a lot of times. And remember, you might want to just do the Xbox factoring all the time. Okay? All right, so let's get into it. So here's subtracting polynomials. Now, if this were adding polynomials, it'd be easy. I just have to add like terms. But since it's subtracting, I'm going to distribute a negative 1 first. So I have to distribute a negative 1 to everything. So this is positive, now this is negative. This was negative, now it's positive. This is negative, now it's positive. Now it's just about going back and finding like terms. So I have here my end of the thirds. I have negative 2 end of the third. That's going to go with negative 4 end of the third. That's negative 6 end to the third. I'm going to cross them out so I know I'm done with them. I like, remember, standard form. So now my next highest exponent would be squareds. So 4 squareds. Plus 8 squared uh, n squared is 12 n squared. Remember when we add, we don't change the exponent at all. We're just adding the coefficients. And then 7 plus 6 is 13. All right, so essentially that's how you would do an addition one as well, except for you wouldn't have to change anything at the beginning. All right? All right, uh, find each product. Remember, you could do a double distribute. Or you could set up the table. I'll set up the table. X plus 3. And then across the top we have negative X squared minus 5X and plus 5. X times negative X squared is negative X to the third. X times negative 5X is negative 5X squared. X times 5 is 5X. Up here we have 3 times negative x squared is negative 3x squared. 3 times negative 5x is negative 15x. And 3 times 5 is 15. And if you remember, like terms are generally right here. Diagonal, so I have negative x to the third. Negative 3x squared and negative 5x squared is negative 8x squared. Negative 15x's and 5x's is negative 10x's plus 15. All right, let's do the next one. Factor out a greatest common factor. All right, remember, I look at my lowest number is 30. First thing I want to say, does 30 go into 40? No. So then I look at factors of 30. 1 times 30, we already did. 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 5 and 6. We already tried 30. Does 15 go into 40? No. Does 10? Yes, 10 goes in. Then I need to look... I have b squared b. I have no common b, so 10 is my greatest common factor. I go back and divide. 40 divided by 10 is 4, plus 30 divided by 10 is 3. Don't forget our b. Minus 40 divided by 10 is 4, b squared. All right, there you have that. All right, factors. So a string method will first times last is 72. I need two numbers and multiply to 72 and add to 17. So we know we're going to put an x in front of both. And we know we don't have to put over anything because it's just a 1, right? So we don't have to put it over 1 because that doesn't do anything. So uh, two numbers that multiply to 72 and add to 17, 8 and 9. Do a quick check. x times x is x squared. 8 times 9 is 72. So first times last, 8 times c. That's two numbers that multiply to negative 40 and add to 6. We're going to put 5v in the front of both our binomials. And we know we have an extra factor of 5, so we need to put in the bottom. Two numbers that multiply to negative 40 and add to 6 are 10 and negative 4. So up here we have a factor of 5. I take it out. V plus 2. No common factors here. And these 5s cancel, so we have V plus 2 times 5V minus 4. V times 5V is 5V squared. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Looks like it's good. Uh, factor, first times last. Ooh. Um, let's see here. Can we even factor this? No. Let's make this a squared. So, um, 
Common factor of four, I think I can take out. So we're gonna have to double factor this. So this is gonna be x squared plus three x minus 18. So I have two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add to three. So put my x in front of both. I don't have to go Austra all the way Australian because it's a factor of one. Two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add to three. Um, six and negative three. Here we have it. All right. Solve by factoring. So we're going to use the zero product property. This one is easy Australian because I have a leading coefficient of one. So two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 10. I'm going to go with six and four. So then set each of those equal to zero. So x equals negative six or x equals negative four. Over here I need to add 72p, so 8p squared plus 72p plus 64 equals zero. All right, uh, common factor, yeah, I can take an eight out of all of that. Two numbers that multiply to eight and add a nine, p plus eight plus 1. Now 8, I can set it equal to 0, but really nothing to do there. So this is p plus 8 equals 0, or p plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 8 and we get negative 8. Subtract 1 and we get negative 1. And that's it. So good luck on the unit 10 test. There's a lot of stuff in there. Make sure you, uh, but a lot of it's just the same thing over and over again, all right? Shouldn't be too hard for you. Good luck, and I'll see you on the flip side.